Hey, this is Peter from Next and Web, and you are watching the latest episode of How to Build Video Series. Today I'm going to show you how our agency template slider group was created, and maybe you will even learn some things about jQuery selectors too. Start by creating a group. Groups can help organize your sliders and publish them together. Enter the group you just created. Here you can create sliders for this group. The first slider will be called Main. It will have 700 pixels height and full page responsive mode. Press the Add Slide button and choose the image slide. Pick the image which will be the background of this slide. And now enter the slide. At the background options, you are able to create a color overlay for the background image. You just need to lower the opacity of the image and then pick the color you want to have. For this slider, I will use a gradient color and we can start working on the layers. Put down an image layer which will have the text Agency. This text looks more special, that is why we used an image instead of an actual text. I will need a 5 column structure. Since we only have a preset for the maximum of 4 columns, I will put that down and duplicate one of the columns. Now a heading layer will come into the first column. This will hold my first text. At the Design tab we should change the font style. The color will be a bit transparent, but on hover it should still stay white. Then the font size should be smaller. When you put down new layers, they will copy the style of the last layer, so I can fill up the rest of the columns pretty easily. All I need to do is to replace their texts. The columns are too far apart from each other, so the full width settings should be turned off on the row. With the gutter we can specify the column distance we would like to have. Another row comes under the previous one and you can insert a heading layer inside it. This will contain a longer text to show some message to the visitors. The color of the font will be more transparent. The hover state should look the same so I will reset its font settings and go back to the normal text state to change the font size. The next heading layer can come. Change the text to show different message. Go to the Design tab to change the style of this font too. Our last layer will be a button. The font style should be changed, as well as the style of the button. This button will have a white blue design too. Now we can adjust the margins, paddings and maximum width to position the layers where we want them. Check out the responsive behavior. We don't have to touch the tablet view, but on the mobile view we need to make some adjustments. These words are short enough to keep the two of them in one line. So let's change the wrap after setting and lower the space between them too, with the gutter. The content layer's padding could be smaller and we won't need this many tags on mobiles. You can hide layers with the show on settings device icons, which can also be found on the toolbar. There is some extra space on this row, what we should also decrease. The size of this text is too big for phones, and with the font resizer we can make it smaller. Some more minor adjustments and our slider's responsiveness is perfect. Go back to the desktop view to set up the animations. Most of the layers will have layer animations, like the top fade animation. I will decrease the Y offset value to start the animation lower. These smaller tags will also have top fade animations with smaller Y offset values. You can copy paste layer animations on the layer list. I need some animations on the rest of the words, so I will use this feature to be done with it quickly. Close the layer list and move on the next layer. This will have a bottom fading animation with a small offset. The biggest text will have a split text animation. From the predefined animations, the button animation will be a good start for what I'm trying to achieve. The animation should happen with entire words and the duration should be longer. I want to use the elastic out easing because it will create a kind of rubbery effect. The Y offset value should be smaller here too, and we can apply these settings to the heading layer. Lastly, the bottom will have a layer animation too. It will come into the slide with top fading. Now that the animations are done, we can adjust their timings on the timeline. 
Usually these animations look best when they are starting before the previous one finishes. Close the timeline once you are done and check out the animations. They look the way they are supposed to, so we can save our slide. Go to the slider setting to add one more animation to the slider. Under the general tab you can find the shape dividers. With these you can insert shapes in top or bottom of the slider and right now I need a bottom shape divider. It should be animated and responsively set up. The tablet view is fine as usual. But on mobile view my divider is quite small and I will increase its height. This is done and we can save the slider too, as it is completed. The building of the rest of the sliders wouldn't show many new things, so we will skip that part to rather focus on something we haven't showed yet. Full page responsive mode means that your slider is exactly as big as the browser screen is. In a lot of cases that is what people are looking for, but sometimes you have an element on your page, like a top menu, which pushes the sliders lower from the bottom of the screen. You could remove the height of this element from the slider's height calculation. All you need to figure out is the jQuery selector of the element. To do this, right click on the element and choose inspect. Most browsers are supporting it, like Chrome and this will open up a web inspector showing the elements of the website. If you hover over the elements, they will get highlighted, so this can help you figure out which part was created where. In my case, I will need this menu element, but the top element would be just as fine because both are highlighting the part I want to remove. Try to find an element with an ID. You can use classes too, but those aren't always unique. Read out the ID or one of the classes, which seem to be unique on the element, like in my case menu is the ID. Then go to the full page slider settings. Go to the size tab where you will find a modify slider height setting. Here you can enter your selector and this will remove the selector's height from our slider's height calculation. To enter a class write a dot character before the selector's name. And to enter an ID write a hashtag character before the name. If your element's height doesn't change on different screen sizes then you can also simply remove the height in pixels. Smart Slider 3 has a feature that will allow you to scroll to any selector on a website, like this slider. Right click on the element you want to scroll to and choose Inspect. With mouse hovering try to find the element, which will highlight your element. This one looks right, but I can only see classes, so I will rather search further for an element with an ID. This element highlights my slider too, and it has the N2 SS188 ID, what I could use, so I will write this ID up and go to my slide. At any link option, like the link of the layer, you can find a button to bring up the options you have. You should go inside Actions. Then scroll to. We have some predefined words to help you scroll to different parts of a page, like right after the slider or to the next slider. But you can use selectors too, to scroll to other parts. All you have to do is to insert the jQuery selector into this field. Once again, if it is a class, there's a dot in the beginning. If it is an ID, there's a hashtag. Now if I click the About text, I will be scrolled to the given element. This is how the agency template slider group was created. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like and if you would like to see more videos in the future, subscribe. Goodbye.